Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Helping Hand, as proudly we hail the work of the military police of the United States Army, the men who exercise their authority with discretion and tact, who bring good judgment, fairness, and understanding to each situation, a potent force in maintaining law and order. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, you know, in the last two years that I've been the announcer on Proudly We Hail, I've had an awful lot of men come up to me and ask me what the situation is in the Army today for specialists and technicians. Men already trained in their professions, in the Army or as civilians. And I can only tell them that the opportunities are better today than ever before. Now, in the first place, as men already trained and experienced in your jobs, you'll find that the Army offers a wide open opportunity for advancement, and promotion. And in the second place, as specialists interested in what you are doing, you'll discover that in the Army, you'll be able to work with the finest equipment in the world, and you'll be doing jobs that are worthwhile and interesting. And in the third place, as technicians interested in improving your knowledge and understanding of your particular field, you'll be very interested to hear that today's technical training schools in the Army are better than ever. So, men, if you've been wondering what the Army has to offer you, you, the trained technician or specialist, take a tip from me and visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station to get all the facts. The very friendly people at the recruiting service would be glad to tell you all about it. And if you'll just take the time to drop in and get information Without obligation, I can say very sincerely, believe me, you'll be very glad you did. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Helping Hand. Transcontinental train number 322, leaving from track 12, gates now open. Transcontinental train number 322, leaving track 12, gates now open. The familiar call in the station told me that it would soon be time to get on the train to start my patrol. I had made this trip many times before, but somehow, somehow it would all be different now. It's hard to explain what happens to a guy's insides when... Oh, well, what's the use of thinking about it now? In the distance, I can see my partner, PFC Sam Miller, approaching. We had a job to do. Hi, Sam. Hi, Bill. Well, I've been inspected from stem to stern and back again. Sergeant said I look like I stepped out of a bandbox, gear and all. Does my shine dazzle you? You're okay. What's the matter with you? You catch it? No, Sarge is a good egg. Yeah, I don't get this. Your face is as pale and green as if you hadn't slept in a week. You act as if you're ready to swallow me alive. What gives? Got nothing to do with you. Come on, we'll check with the conductor, find out where our seats are. Whatever you say. Let's go. We put a sign on our places reserved for military police. That makes our seats on the train official. After locating the senior officer aboard, just in case we needed him, as well as a medical officer and aid man, we toured the train from front to rear, checking papers. What's the matter, soldier? My, my, my wallet, it's, it's gone. 
Hey, I had my furlough papers in it, money, everything I own. When did you last see it? I know I had it when I got on the train. I, I bought some magazines. Where are you headed for? Camp Crowley. I got to take a 30-mile bus ride from the station. I was just about to go into the diner. I I'm flat busted. Oh, $17. Gee, I don't know what to do. It, it never happened to me before. I I'm sure I had that wallet when I got on the train. Take care of him, will you, Sam? Yeah, sure, Bill. <laughs> We placed the soldier in protective custody for his own protection, furnished him with a provisional military police pass in place of his lost furlough papers, meal tickets, and transportation to his post to be paid for out of the soldier's pay. Now, this is not an arrest. No violation is involved, and no adverse report is submitted. A report of incident is sent forward to the man's commanding officer for information only. It sure feels good to sit down for a change. I gotta fill out this report. Hey, wait a minute, Bill. What's wrong, will you? You'll be going on furlough after this trip. You act like you're going to a funeral. I am. All right, wise guy. Who died? Me. Oh, brother, that does it. I give up. Okay, you like sad stories. I'll tell you one. I'm all ears. Remember that girl I met in Louisville? I told you about her? Yeah, sure. You even showed me her picture. Real beauty. Louisville is my hometown, you know. I'm all washed up with her. Well, how come? Sounded like the real thing. From what you told me, she went for you in a big way, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. How wrong can you get? Oh, that's a tough break, Bill. Ah, the fun we had. We went roller skating together. Long walks, talking all the time. There never seemed to be room enough for everything we wanted to say. We even talked about... Ah, uh, what's the difference now? Well, look, maybe you can patch it up. The run-ins in Louisville, you got your furlough, maybe you can... Nothing look... like that. I wish it was. What happened back there? Come on, looks like some soldiers got mixed up in a card game. Break it up, man! Break it up! Soldiers were being taken for every cent they had. Yeah, that card sharp looked familiar. I've seen him before. Oh, sure. Remember that Ohio run? The guy was always saying, I was a GI myself oh, once. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Same one. He's taking a staff sergeant for almost 50 bucks. Shh. How do hustlers like that stay in business? He won't. The civilian police will catch up to him. That staff sergeant's still sending me thank you notes for getting him out of a jam. Yeah. So, Bill? Yes, sir. Eh? Well, you were going to tell me what happened. What happened? Yeah, with your girl. Oh. Well, I can't figure out what it was I said, what I did the last time we were together. Oh, look, how do you know? How can you be sure she's through with you? How do you know what's... Probably so... met another guy and zip like that. Yeah, but how do you know? You haven't said anything I yet. wrote her seven letters. Count them, count them. Seven letters. They all come back unopened. Now, let me look at Come those. on, let's go. We've got work. May I, uh, may I see your pass, soldier? Pass? Sure. Pass. Furlough papers, orders. Oh, I don't have any. What are you doing on the train? Well, I went home to see my mother. I phoned her from the post, and she was pretty sick. Don't so... you know you're supposed to have a pass? No. It was a weekend. I, I thought How long week... have you been in the Army, soldier? Oh, three weeks. Maybe nobody told you, but whenever you leave the post, you're supposed to have a pass. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, not on a weekend. I I'm going back to camp now. Where are you stationed? Camp Douglas. <laughs> That's funny. How'd you get by before this? Well, I didn't. I, I hitchhiked home. I got a ride practically right up to my front door. Next time you want to go home, ask your first sergeant or company commander. You won't have any trouble. All right. Gee, I, I'm sorry. A am I in hot water? <laughs> Not exactly. I'll give you a provisional military police pass, what we call a PMPP. That'll save you the trouble of explaining next time you're stopped. Get you past the gate of your camp. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. You'll learn after you've been in the Army a while that everything is done through channels. 
Helps keep things organized that way. Well, I've learned already. Next time I have to get home, I'll know what to do. Now you're cooking. All right, give me your name, organization, and serial number. I'll write you out of place. I could tell the soldier was giving me the truth. He was a clean-cut kid. Hadn't quite grown into his uniform yet. In a situation like that, a pat on the head and a helping hand goes a long way towards making a serviceman feel that an MP is his friend if he ever gets in the spot. I knew after I gave the soldier the PMPP, he'd never leave his station again without a pass. How'd you do, Sam? Any excitement? Oh, not much. A couple of sailors on the wrong train. First sergeant who lost his furlough papers. <laughs> his face must have been red. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you notice how many soldiers are traveling with their girls this trip? Ah, uh, so that's what you've been thinking when you walk through the train, huh? Oh, it just occurred to me. That's not Oh, wrong. sure, sure. Your brain's so filled up with that girl you can't see. Cut straight. it out. Okay. All I'm saying Maybe is that... Maybe you've said too much. Look, Bill. Sure, you're in love with a girl. Things like that have happened before. It's not the end of the world. You'll find another girl. You're not... Where will I find her? Union Station? Maybe I'll put an ad in the newspaper. You know any more jokes? Oh, that's not what I meant. Skip it. Feel a lot better if you talk about it. Thanks. Got a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm acting like an awful dope. She meant an awful lot to me. I didn't think I could ever feel that way about anyone. You understand, Sam? Yeah, I'm beginning to. My furlough is made out to Louisville. Ten days in Louisville. What'll I do for ten days? Why don't you go home? Where's that? Wherever I happen to be, that's home for me. It's been that way for a long time. Well, that's a tough break, though. What time is it, Sam? Hey, Bill, here comes a soldier with a worried look on his face. You're the doctor. Hey, can you help me out, MP? I'm in a bit of a sweat. I'll do what I can. You see, I bought my girl a gift at the station. Thought I'd have enough left over to buy myself a meal before I hit camp. I haven't had a thing to eat since this morning. I'm down to my last dime. Still got a long way to go. Where are you headed for? Camp Douglas. I'm in the 11th Tank Battalion. Well, we can pink slip him. I'll get you a pink slip. Good for a couple of meals in the diner. Oh, great. The railroad company will send that slip to the finance office at your post, soldier. Charges will be deducted from your pay. Oh, good deal. I guess I was a little too generous with my girl. <laughs> it's a dumb trick. Yeah, you feel better after you've eaten. Thanks a lot. I certainly appreciate your help. Follow me, soldier. We'll go see the conductor. <laughs> You've been gone a long time. Anything up? I don't know for sure. I just passed the washroom. I saw a soldier stretched out, dead to the world. I tried to wake him up, and it didn't do any good. He just keeps on mumbling something and twisting and turning. Oh, is he asleep? Can't be sure. Did you smell his breath? First thing, there's not a trace of alcohol on it. Besides, he looks like a clean-cut kid. Well, where is he? A Ford in the train, about four cars. I think he's got a fever, and he's sick. How sick? Mighty sick. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Helping Hand. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. High school seniors, ensure a secure, well-paying future by preparing for it now. The United States Army's Reserved for You program will guarantee you a classroom seat in an exciting Army technical career course before you enlist. You'll get top-notch training and on-the-job experience while serving side-by-side -side with America's finest young men and women. The choice is wide open, and it's all yours to make. High school graduates can take their choice of from more than 100 interesting courses, everything from atomic technician to welding. The fact-filled booklet, Reserved for You, tells you all about this program. You'll learn of many other fine Army benefits, too, like regular pay increases, promotions, exciting travel assignments, and unbeatable leisure time activities. Get in on the swing. Get your free copy of Reserved for You 
by visiting or writing your nearest United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Helping Hand. Two military policemen are making their rounds on a transcontinental train. Their job is normally a routine one, maintaining law and order. A wallet disappears. A pass is misplaced. A soldier runs out of funds. Routine tasks for these two men. But something more than routine has happened. A soldier has taken sick. There he is, Sam. He stopped twisting and turning. Hey, Bill, he's just lying there. It's all the pale. Uh, he's trying to say something. Take it easy, soldier. Just lie back oh, easy. Gentle. Sam, put your hand on his I cheek. Don't... He's burning I, up. I just yeah, don't, don't don't try to talk now, soldier. You're pretty sick. There's a nurse back in the coach. I'll go get her. Yeah, see if the medical officer is still in the diner. Hey, okay, huh? stand by, will you, Sam? Don't let anybody move. Her. How is he, Sam? I don't know yet. Nurse and captain are in there with him. Pretty rough. Yeah, he seemed to be in bad shape. I loosened his clothes. Captain said he let me know what the score was as soon as he took his temperature. We'll just have to sweat it out. Captain wants to see you, Bill. I'll wait outside. Yeah, let me know. Now, how is he? Fever's way up. Captain said it's probably an advanced stage of pneumonia. We have to get him to a hospital right away. Our next stop is Cincinnati. There's a general hospital in town there. It's about 15 minutes late. That means we'll be there in a half hour, 35 minutes at most. Well, that's not too bad. I gotta get some blankets. I'll be right back. These are all the blankets I could carry. Oh, fine. That's plenty. Captain's waiting for him. One more thing, Sam. The conductor's in the next car. You haven't sent a wire to the military police in Cincinnati to have an ambulance waiting at the station? Was just about to take care of it. Uh, where, where are they taking me? Where are they? I just took care of that me. telegram. How is he? Oh, about the same. The captain said to let him know if there's any change. The nurse will be back in a minute. Yeah, nice going. It's about 20 minutes to go. I should give the ambulance just enough time to get I, there. I don't feel so good. You'll be okay, soldier. There's nothing to worry about. Well, that takes care of everything, I guess. Better go see the conductor to make sure the aisle is cleared when they come aboard to the stretcher. Right. Sam, you stay here and direct passengers to another washroom. We need as much air as we can in here. Will do, Bill. In the meantime, I'll copy down the information. I've got the soldiers' papers and personal effects. I'll see to what they don't get lost. I'll be back as soon as I can. Stop, Cincinnati. Stand back, please. Clear the aisle. Right, Everybody on, stand on. back. The soldier was taken into protective custody, given the proper medical and hospital care. A report of incident was sent to his commanding officer explaining his illness, disposition, and absence from duty. In all instances like this, the military police make out a full report. Shove over, buddy. I'm beat. Hi, Sam. Anything new? Yeah, the usual. An orientation job on a couple of new recruits. Meal tickets and a PMPP for a corporal being transferred to a new station. Had his wallet lifted. I'll be with you in a minute, Sam. I gotta get my notebook in order. Might as well tackle mine, too. This is as good a time as any. There we are. That just about does it. Hey, Bill. Yeah, Sam. As long as you're going to be in Louisville and you don't know anybody there, why don't you spend some time at my house? No, thanks. Well, I got another patrol tomorrow, but after that, I've got a three-day pass. I could dig up a couple of laughs and know a lot of people around town. Might be fun. That's <laughs> a nice try, Sam. No go. Well, I was only suggesting... Don't worry about me. I'll do all right. What time is it? Uh, we get there in 15 minutes. There's one time I wouldn't object to staying on the train and riding on forever. Listen, if there's anything I can do... Oh, well. Least I can do is get rid of these letters. Imagine. A guy pours it out like each word is a jewel, some precious stone. What happens? He gets kicked in the gut. 
Let's take a look at that envelope, huh? See the pretty postmarks. Address unknown. Return to sender. Return, return, return. She wouldn't even open. Hey, wait a minute. Karen Ann Dawson, 546 South Chestnut Drive, Fairville, Kentucky. Fairville, Kentucky? What's the matter? Well, you dumb clock, no wonder she didn't get the letters. The post office isn't a mind reader. I know what you're talking about. Look, genius, you had the wrong address. Wrong address? Of course. Fairville is right over the state line. It's in Indiana. I know where Fairville is. I've been there a dozen times. Well, we used to take the bus to Louisville all the time. It was a short well, hauler. Sure, but Fairville is in Indiana. Well, you mean, you, you mean she never even got my letters? How could she? Well, I'll be And a... she'll probably be as sore as blazes you never wrote her. You, you really think so, Sam? You, you really think of so? Of course. Come on, come on, let's take one last look around before the trip is over. Let's make it a great big look, huh? This is it. Oh, brother, am I weary. Who are you kidding? Hey, remember me? I know you. You're just anxious, that's all. <laughs> we spend too much time together. <laughs> I'm going to put in a request for another partner next trip. Yeah, I'll bet. Hey, Bill, who's our relief this trip, do you know? I think it's Swanson and a new man just out of military police school. I guess there's not much to tell them. Routine trip? Yeah, just routine. Well... Have a nice furlough, Bill. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Say hello to your girl for me, huh? You can bet on that. Thanks, Sam. Thanks? For what? Why don't you get lost? <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Ah, uh, well, um, can I come in? I guess so. Perhaps you're going to tell me you lost my address. That's 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 pretty close to the truth. You'd better explain. Well, I, I wrote you just as I promised, but all, all the letters came back unopened, and I thought, look, look, here, here, here's my proof. I don't understand. They seem to be... You have the wrong address. It's Indiana, not Kentucky. Yeah, that's what I found out. Oh, Bill, how could you have made such a mistake? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I made a mistake. And all the time I didn't hear from you, I, I was beginning to think you were one of those people who get caught up in something and, and then nothing. What do you think I went through? Torture, to put it mildly. Oh, Bill, I'm sorry. I figured out a hundred different reasons why the letters bounced back without being open. And all the reasons added up to zero. Oh, how silly, Bill. You should have known when a thing like this happens. It, well, it, it was probably because of circumstances that had nothing to do with us. I should have known it. It had nothing to do with us. Ha! <laughs> did, did you know that? <laughs> no. Well, then. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd never see you again. Boy, I was ready to cancel my furlough. But now... <laughs> I don't think I will. You'd better not. You know, Karen, I was thinking. Yes? I might make the same mistake again when I write you. You know, I mean by by, by, by accident. Uh, you might. Yeah, yeah, so we, uh, well, we, we could fix it so, so it wouldn't happen again. Uh, how? Well, uh, for example, if, um, <clears throat> we both had the same address. Uh, well, I... I don't know. Think about it. Promise? I promise. Oh, boy, this is going to be the best furlough a guy ever had. The very best. Transcontinental train number 322 leaving from track 15... Transcontinental train number 322 now leaving from track number 15. Gates now open. 
Wherever the wheels of travel turn, the military police are on the job to control and assist service personnel. Their presence is insurance for millions of servicemen and women of the armed forces. Insurance towards safe arrival without interference or delay. The common sense, the sense of fair play that the military police bring to the routine situations that crop up at every turn. These are the tickets of safety and security towards new destinations. Here's a message to the registered nurses of our nation. By your choice of a career, you have become members of a dedicated profession. You have elected to use your knowledge and skills to serve humanity. For your unselfishness, your efficiency, and your high degree of training, you are universally respected. But perhaps you've reached a point in your career where it's often hard to keep your goals in sight. You can't always see where your devotion to your creed is leading. If this is true, this is the time that you should seriously consider the Army Nurse Corps. In this great organization which has established such a fine tradition, you can find a deep and lasting personal satisfaction in your work. You can clearly see your life of service stretching out before you. Service to your fellow man, service to your country, and service to yourself you'll be performing an extremely vital function in our nation's security. Yes, if you are a registered nurse, there are unparalleled opportunities for you in the Army Nurse Corps. This is really a nursing career with a future, offering opportunities for world travel, valuable specialized training, and a good salary. You begin as a commissioned officer, enjoying the same prestige, pay, and benefits of the male officers. You work with the best equipment, have opportunities to develop your professional skills by working with many different types of patients. In addition, you'll enjoy a 30-day paid vacation every year. But most important of all, you'll get a tremendous satisfaction from your work, and you'll be doing your country a vital service. Act right now. Find out if you are qualified to serve as an Army nurse. Write to the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Write today. Your country needs you. Write to the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.